TV analyst, Katie Christensen. Hello, Katie. Oh, good morning, you guys. <laughs> Jeez, Dave, you also gave a health update in there. Yeah, well, I didn't want to throw you under the old bus there. You know, it's good for you. Yeah. Good for you. You had a lot yeah. of fun yesterday. It was nice. You know, uh, it was it was a very random day. I got up in the morning and went out to, to have coffee and ran into Mark Jones and then ran into Alvin Gentry. And obviously, Alvin was here for a long time. And he was going to meet Lindsey Harding. And so it was like, come along. And it ended up being a very random day of Mardi Gras. I was so scared I was just going to stay in my room because it's absolutely wild. But it was a good day. It was a really, really fascinating um, social experience, if you will. A lot of good people watching? Oh, some great people watching. Absolutely. And, you know, the the crazy thing is is that my – uh, hotel room at the uh, Four Seasons is right on Canal Street. So for the last two nights, it has been the most challenging thing to go to sleep because outside of my room is a massive party. Um, <laughs> right? A lot of trumpets. Loud, loud and crazy and a lot of music and and you just, you hear everything. But it was, it was a, it was a great day and and now it's game day. Did so you, basketball, basketball, basketball. Did you get some beads? Hmm. I, 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 okay, hold on. Stop. Hold yes, on. I, exactly. You know how you get those beads. I've gotten beads too there. I didn't mean it that way. I'm saying they have like <laughs> they, they they have like team oriented. Like I have yeah. beads with the Kings. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm asking if you brought it. Are you bringing beads home for your kiddo? I have a, a bunch a bunch of beads. Now, you must understand I am too old to partake in that form of Mardi Gras, if you will. Um, so you purchased Lindsay them? Harding. <laughs> you no, know, Lindsay Harding was obsessed with getting beads, right? Uh-huh. And it turns out all you have to do is ask very nicely, or be along with Alvin Gentry, and everybody ah, yeah. here knows him, right. and gives the coconuts and the beads, and you know, stop and take the picture. I think Alvin should have just been in the parade. He was that popular. <laughs> Wait, the coconuts. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. So okay. they give out coconuts. You know, uh, Jason knows all about yes. this. It's a good luck thing, and they're all this. decorated. And we're yeah. talking about real coconuts. Yeah. Yes. Like, no, okay, we're not yeah. making a joke here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, decorated, painted, and glitter, and they're they're good luck. And you know, Lindsay Harding is from uh, Mobile, Alabama, mm-hmm. which apparently I did not know this is where Mardi Gras originally started. And there really? they give out yes, and there they give out moon pies. Ah. And so she was really upset that there was no, like, moon pies or, or, like, candy given out. It's coconuts here. Jason, just, I can't. <laughs> There's too much. There's, There's just too, too much for Dave. Moon pies and yeah. coconuts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what and to beads. do here. Yep. She's yeah. doing it on purpose. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, all <laughs> right. Moment. Well, um, tonight's game, then. We'll go there. Um, <laughs> we can go there. Yeah, the... Dave and I were talking about really the importance of this game, standings wise, where this team wants to get to, a potential tiebreaker on the line, moving closer. Katie, I feel like a loss doesn't mathematically eliminate him, but really puts him in a tough spot. So let's get into the game tonight. I mean, how how can the Kings beat this Pelicans team that's completely different than the one they faced earlier this year? Spot. So let's get yeah, into the completely game tonight. different and playing incredibly well right now. Obviously, the addition of. TJ McCollum has has really elevated their roster, and they're playing very, very well. You look at this team, and they started 1-13 um, through their first 14 games and how they've turned things around and really bought into what Willie Green is doing, and they have just an incredible amount of talent that has kind of meshed together. Um, this is going to be a really, really difficult game. And the Kings have to be able to come out here and play focus, follow the game plan. Because you're right, the the reality of the situation is um, when you look at not only just tonight's game, but tomorrow's tomorrow night's game in San Antonio. Those are two games that if you're going to have the ability to get into the play on the play in, um, you absolutely have to win these two games. That's how I look at mm-hmm. it. Um, because, you know, there's the whole thing about, you know, you have to take care of things yourself. You can't rely on others to, to help you out kind of as the season closes. And that's what the Kings have had to do the last few years. 
they've been in a situation where they needed help from a couple other teams at the end of the year, and it just didn't work out. So to me, it's it's really about focusing on C.J. McCollum and Brandon Ingram, who are, are really starting to figure things out together. Um, so defensively, the Kings game plan has to be on point tonight. And additionally, you know, DeMontis has struggled the last couple games just offensively in terms of his offense and scoring. I don't think they have the personnel to really affect him the way that, you know, Denver did or, you know, I thought OKC did a really good job of just sending multiple, multiple bodies. So I think it's also really imperative that, that Domas has a really big offensive game tonight as well. Katie Christensen joining us as I turn my mic back on. Katie, uh, we have gone after Alvin a little bit, who we love, but we've gone after him a little bit. He made a comment uh, about a week ago saying that he, he it was after a loss. He said, you know, I really got to I gotta keep either Fox or Sabonis on the floor at the same time because the game gets away from us when they're both off the floor as it happened in that game. And we've noticed since then that there have been games where he's once again had Fox and Sabonis off the floor at the same time. Now, I was watching, I want to say it was the Denver game, and I want to say it was the crossover. Kyle asked you, and I could be getting this wrong, and and you countered that. And, and I, I want some clarity there, Katie. You said actually, uh, no, he does need to rest them at times together because they need to play together. So do you disagree with the idea that 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 one of those guys at least has to be on the floor at all times? I think that I don't disagree with it at all. I think that that is, you know, when you, when you look at those being your two best players, you want to be able to have kind of that offensive threat. But I think the problem that um, it's just about how you, you – um, rotate minutes, right? And you have to really be precise about it. And I think what has happened the last two games is that Domas has gotten into foul trouble. And so he's had to take him off the floor in that situation. And then you can't play De'Aaron Fox 43 minutes because Domas was in foul trouble. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there are times where he's they're not he's not going to be able to have them on the floor at the same time. And there should be periods of time where, listen, if, you, if there's two minutes at the end of the third quarter where he wants to take them out of the game at the same time together and the first two minutes of the fourth quarter so that they can get a legitimate rest to finish out the last ten minutes of the fourth, he should be able to rely on his roster to give him four total minutes during the game without those two on the floor. You see what I mean? I think that he's looking to, to have one of the two of them on the floor as much as possible, but I don't think that you can guarantee that throughout the course of a game every single night, um, depending on foul trouble or, or just, hey, I need these four minutes right here so that they can have a good rest together and finish it out. So I don't think any coach ever is like, married to the fact that one of these two guys has to be on the floor no matter what at any given moment. Katie, it was only one game, but the sample was pretty spectacular for Trey Lyles as the starter. Uh, hopefully more of that can continue. I thought he'd be great for shooting, but his ability to get to the basket on cuts was really impressive. What do you think he does for an encore tonight? Yeah, I mean, that was really, really impressive. And I think what most impressed me about about his game is just his patience. And he is not an overly athletic guy. You know, he's he's kind of slower, um, more deliberate with his moves. But I thought it was fantastic how fundamental his game was. Because when you, when you lack things in your game, you figure out how to make up for it in other ways. And just his ability to use simple pump fakes and get guys in the air and then put the ball on the floor and score at the rim or do a, you know, one or two dribble pull up and shoot it. Like he was, he was really spectacular in, in the different ways that he was able to contribute in that game. And so um, it was a surprise. I didn't know that he was going to be in, in moved into that starting lineup. You know, I think we've gotten so accustomed to Mo Harkless being in that lineup that no one asked Alvin. And had we asked Alvin, um, he would have told us, you know, because <laughs> he doesn't really keep those things a secret. Um, but I am looking forward tonight to see how he follows it up. 
because he obviously figured out a way in playing alongside um, DeMontis. I think he's very comfortable in knowing how to get to his spots, how to space the floor, also when to cut, when to move, and, and then crashing the glass. I thought that, you know, even prior to his start, one of the bigger things that he did is he came in in like six minutes and got like five rebounds or something like that. You know what I mean? So he impacts the game in a lot of ways. So I'm excited to see how he follows it up tonight. The chat overwhelmingly wants us to tell you that you're never too old to enjoy Mardi Gras, Katie. Mm. Um, you know what? After yesterday and seeing just the the vast array, one of my favorite thing was seeing like these 75 year olds that were out there, like full Mardi Gras, like uh, regalia, really out there together enjoying it. So I guess you're not. Yeah. Um, but if you're in the, uh, the tail end of an NBA season when all you've been doing is traveling and and working, and uh, you you feel like you're maybe closer to 90 than 75. So it, maybe if it were a non-work uh, occasion, I would be able to enjoy it more. All right, well, we got to go. Have a great rest of the trip. Yes or no answer, because we got to go. Did you Are you bringing me any presents? Yes. Okay. 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 Is that no. le- like legit, or are you just saying that? Yes. <laughs> have a wonderful trip. Please get a puffy taco in San Antonio for me. I want a picture and everything. And that's the best food in the world. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Yes. <laughs>